Hey, welcome back again to another edition of The Fine Line Between Stupid and Clever. And this is going to be, I think, my most ambitious build yet. Um, since I completed my epoxy guitar, I have thought of all kinds of interesting things to do with epoxy. And the big idea I had was combining a wood body guitar with epoxy inside of it and also some internal illumination. This is the logo for my band that I have been honored to play with for about the last eight years. In short, we are a um, bunch of middle-aged uh, dads that play cheesy rock and roll cover music, and we use all the crutches we can, including shtick and costumes. And uh, our logo has been a big part of that too. We put our logo on everything. We put our logo on the drums and on speakers and on all kinds of stuff. Um, and uh, I thought this would be a funny way for us to highlight our logo yet once again, highlighted inside the guitars that we are playing. And let me walk you through the concept that we're doing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take, this is my um, artist rendition up here. I'm gonna take a wood body, route out the inside of it about a half an inch deep, I'm going to have a recreation of the band logo set deep within the box body and covered in epoxy. So I got black pearl for the RX and I've got white pearl for the round circle that will be behind it. And it will be sitting on a bed of red epoxy colored with red mica powder and also lots of glitter. So um, it'll be cheesy to say the least, but hopefully pretty cool. Let me show you the donor vehicles or the donor guitars here that we're going to be starting with. First of all, for the bass, I have a standard Squire P bass. Um, this has been used as our practice bass for quite some time. I got it at a pawn shop, maybe for 50 bucks. I can't remember. It's a standard. There's nothing wrong with it. Works fine. Um, for the guitar, I'm actually repurposing this uh, guitar, which at the beginning of its life was the first guitar that my uh, my father ever bought me. It was a PV Special uh, or PV T60, um, which at the time I didn't think was very was worth very much at all. Nowadays they're actually quite sought after. They're 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 pretty expensive, um, and I really wish that I did not destroy it the way that I did, because about 20 years ago I decided I wanted to make it into a semi hollow body guitar, so I routed off the top half of it and added uh, oak routed out oak and made uh, F-holes and everything um, in the um, to recreate it, make it a little bit lighter weight. Um, it's a nice, wonderfully playing guitar. I actually installed these fancy uh, um, combination P90 hot rail pickups in it. Um, I played a gig or two with, these before, with this before, and I've got this adaptation of the Colorado flag stain pattern in the top. It's a cool guitar, but I don't play it really anymore, and um, it just begs to be torn apart again. So... Um, I'm going to use this as my donor guitar for the guitar and the P bass. What could go wrong? So to get started, I started making a routing template out of quarter inch MDF by outlining the guitar and then using a popsicle stick, very high tech here, and marking out a half inch line all the way around the interior of the outline of the guitar where I would cut out the template Similar to the way you would use a template to cut a routing jig for like a pickup, except for I'm using a routing template for the majority of the body of the guitar. I simply repeated the process for the bass as well. First thing I'm going to do is uh, I've got my white perloid pick guard and my traced circles I need to cut out for that. Uh, these uh, you can get them on uh, eBay for about 20 bucks each. They're not cheap. These are standard three ply pick guard material. Um, for the, uh, so the circle is gonna be white perloid. For the RX that goes internal, I got these 3M adhesive black pearl acoustic guitar um, adhesive kind of things. These are smaller and pretty cheap. These are only like eight bucks each. Um, so what I hope to do after I finish the circle, these will just get stuck right on top of that and I'll have black perloid on top of white perloid. And I've got my, marked up uh, one quarter inch MDF uh, routing templates that I'm gonna jigsaw out and then try and uh, smooth out on the barrel sander there and uh, get them ready to 
outline of where I need to hog out the bodies on the guitar. I've got a one and a half inch Forstner bit that's not in the drill press yet. That's going to be the next step and see if I can remove as much of that uh, material from the inside of the guitar bodies as I need to. And I also need to figure out the exact depth, how deep I'm going to go. I haven't figured that out yet. So stay tuned. Okay, I got my routing templates done and smoothed out. I like them a lot. I also have to account for the body contours of the bass. The, um, the guitar is very flat, uh, which is not a problem, but the top body contour of the bass I have to account for because I can't route down into that, otherwise it's not going to be even. So after a little bit of calculation and accounting for the uh, body contour here on the back side of the, of the bass, um, I'm going to shoot for a depth of three quarter inches, which is the same depth as the uh, pockets for the pickups here. Um, I'm starting with my one inch Forstner bit on the drill press, and I've got it set up so that the terminus of the of the drop lines up exactly with the bottom of the pickup cavity. We're gonna give it a shot, see how it goes. So I decided to take a little break and let the drill bit cool down a little bit. And so far, I'm really liking how this is working. <coughs> it's leaving a very cool pattern on the bottom of the tool, too. Um, I'm going to continue with a one inch uh, bit to get around the um, edges, uh, the closest to the edges I can. And then I'll get the uh, larger uh, bit to get the center uh, section out. That should go a little bit faster. Well, that took a while, and now the sun's almost down, but uh, I managed to get the base body all hogged out uh, pretty easily. Um, I'm really glad I thought of not trying to extend beyond this body contour, because then if when I was filling the epoxy, there'd no way it'd be level. So um, unfortunately, it's gonna have a little bit of asymmetry here. And aside from the tight areas in the horns and uh, in the corner here, um, I got most of it pretty cleaned up. The rest uh, will be done with the uh, finishing bit on the router. So after hogging out the guitar body, you can now see how absolutely destroyed this guitar body is, which is why it makes it perfect for this project. But you filled this whole space with epoxy. I think this guitar would just be too unwieldy and super heavy. I also gotta figure out a way to clean up the back cavities so that I can um, uh, get this to paint quality. Okay, so I'm done routing out both the guitar and the bass, and I'm pretty happy with the results. The bass seemed to come out really well, except for this area where the contour is. I had to kind of hand clean that up, but I'm not worried too much about that because that border is going to be sanded and blended in with the epoxy um, when I'm all said and done here, uh, and I'm going to have a paint a straight line over that, so um, I'm not worried about that at all. The I went ahead and uh, hogged out the rest of the what was the central... Um, area of the of the guitar and I figure that was the easiest way to do this. I'm just going to build an insert that will go down into the body here uh, to raise the level of it. But um, I'm doing going through great lengths to uh, uh, salvage this body, uh, which if I were doing it again, obviously I would I would just take a new body or even build a body blank for it. But uh, really good uh, day's work today and moving on. So by taking the top bearing off of the drill bit or the router bit here, I was able to run it around the base of the recess and create a recess for the light strip, the LED light strip that'll be underneath the guitar. Um, I would rather the um, lights not be directly visible through the epoxy, but shining through the epoxy. So this was a, a nifty trick. I'm gonna do this on the other guitar as well. Okay, so after quite a bit of Bondo wood filler, I have managed to fix the body of the guitar, including filling the spaces and the old cavities, and uh, filled the gaps, got it sanded down pretty well, uh, and a lot of the um, uh, nicks and things repaired that I did with the router. Uh, for the base, I just sanded the body down uh, to take the shine off of it, so it'll take a primer pretty well. And the next step is a uh, Rust-Oleum a sandable automotive primer uh, to prepare the bodies, uh, namely the backs of the bodies, uh, before I think about doing any epoxy. So I primed up the bodies and I shot a, a bit of red spray paint under the ledge of the insert there. Took a few measurements so I knew where to route out the cavity for the pickups. So in order to figure out how much epoxy to mix up for the first layer, 
I used sand to estimate the volume and then dumped it into a container to get about 16 ounces. So here's a close-up view of the first layer of epoxy mixed with red mica powder. And then I threw in glitter as well. And the glitter really did come out looking just about right. I was flying by the seat of my pants. I had no idea what I'm doing here. I didn't realize how much of the, um, despite adding a ton of uh, mica powder, it's still fairly translucent, um, which is going to be fine because there's going to be a, a whole logo on top of this and a whole nother, um least, uh, gosh, half inch of epoxy on top of that again as well, clear epoxy. But this is going to add some really wild depth to it. And uh, so far, it's pretty good. I uh, took a uh, grounding wire that's going to be under the bridge and ran it underneath the first uh, pour and just uh, stuck a toothpick in there to hold up the grounding wire in the area where I believe the control cavity is going to be. Um, thinking ahead, I'm glad I thought about that now and not later. Uh, so just to add additional redundancy to the lighting system, I decided to add a second circuit of lights with a simple uh, watch battery fairy lights that are white. Okay, I've got both guitars set up and ready for the final pour. They've been leveled out. I built some uh, dams here with the uh, corrugated plastic for the control cavities. Uh, so that keeps my... Um, watch battery batteries for the fairy lights separated out and also the ground wire from the base here everything's ready to go and on the regular guitar just the fairy lights out of the way too um just time to mix up some uh epoxy and lay it in So here's what I get for using the cheap LEDs that I used. Um, I did put the fairy light strips in as a redundancy because I was afraid that this might happen, but this is what the LED lights look like on the guitar, and which is pretty cool. It does all the LED stuff with all the different colors. You can do all the things. This one's still working. However, the one on the bass guitar completely stopped working. So I think there's something about being in the epoxy that dis disconnected the connections or something. So I'm a little bit upset about that, but at least I still have the white light, fairy lights in the bass. And um, these are working for now in the guitar, but I don't expect them to last very long. So looking carefully at a tangential angle across the top of the epoxy, you can see where no matter how level you get it, there's going to be areas where as the epoxy cures, it pulls back from the edge and um, it's going to need a good uh, effective level sanding uh, before moving forward with it. And it's also got some kind of just general ripples in it, which is interesting, but I didn't expect it to, I, I fully expected it to require that. So I'm working with 80 grit here with the level sanding and I learned in my first uh, epoxy insert guitar that getting a complete and total level sand all the way around is imperative to a good finish later on when you polish the epoxy. So here on the lower horn here, I've gotten that pretty even all the way across. You can see up here on the upper, the upper horn, I still have to sand down the wood quite a bit to get down to the level of the epoxy and I'll keep working that down. Plus up here on the upper bow and lower bow, it's the same thing. Still working on it. Huge professional tip here. The um, dam that I made for the base, I wrapped in uh, a simple layer of duct tape in the bottom and it separated very easy from the epoxy and it didn't leak at all. I could take it all out in one piece. Whereas on the guitar, the whole thing got sucked up and shredded with the, uh, with the epoxy. So um, wrap your corrugated plastic in duct tape. It'll separate from the epoxy. So here's the level sand of the bass guitar. And with all that trouble I made to uh, create a ground wire to go through to the cavity, I actually sawed it off accidentally with the sander. Um, so I got to refigure out that situation for a grounding wire. And the other funny thing is there's no defects in the epoxy except for almost in the same place. And the regular guitar got a tiny little bubble right there. And I'll think about uh, putting some super glue in that. But so far, um, I got it all down to uh, bare wood um, all around the edges. It's completely flat, completely level. This will polish up nicely. So I got the routing done on the base and I made a few mistakes. The uh, 
pickup cavities are not exactly perfect, but I'm not going to beat myself up over it. And I managed to get the um, control cavity routed out without cutting the wires to the uh, lights, which is great. I did lose my ground wires. So I'm going to have to replace that. So fortunately on the base, I was able to dissect out the uh, wire for the grounding connection to the bridge down into the control cavity. Fortunately, the uh, fairy, white, fairy lights still work on the inside. Now it's time to polish up the top and get it looking pretty. I mounted up the neck so I can check the alignment and placement of the bridge for the right scale length. And now I've got to get out the drill press and drill the posts for the, uh, for the bridge. So here are the guitars after the full uh, sanding has been done, wet sanding all the way up to 10,000 grit. So the finish is pretty nice. The outside finish is really clear. It's getting a nice reflection off of it. Now it's time to buff it up. I'm going to use a polisher and some simple rubbing compound, um, automotive rubbing compound here. And then I'm going to use an automotive uh, polish as well to give it its final shine. Okay, so here we go. The epoxy is all polished and looking rather gorgeous, if I do say so myself. I'm very, very pleased with the outcome right now. Next, it's time to finish the outside and the backs of the guitars. And I'm not going to do a lot of videotaping of this, but here's what I'm going to use. I'm going to finish up the priming job with a, a sandable 2-in-1 uh, filler uh, primer. I'm going to put down a base coat of bright red. Then I'm going to add probably a whole can of glitter, red glitter around the edges. And then I got this uh, triple thick glaze. Um, and then I'll probably buff that out uh, with a wet sand and a rubbing compound for the end of it too. Uh, then it's all about wiring it up. So I realized I spent way too much time uh, making the videos for these guitars, but here they are in their finished products. The uh, blinking LED light attempt failed miserably. I was never able to reconnect the broken lights, but I was able to at least salvage the fairy lights, the white lights that are still in the guitars. Here's the base. We have the same layout, kind of exactly. The um, metallic paint came out pretty good on the back too. The guitar, very, very similar. And looking forward to our band's next cheesy gig when we can uh, wear our colors with style. Thanks for watching.